everyone, it's Marco here, back once again from My Color Screen, bringing you the latest and greatest Android home screen tutorials. Today's video will be a tutorial featuring the awesome app called Minimalistic Text. The reason why I chose this tutorial is just because it's been used so often in My Color Screen. It's been around for ages, it's so simple to use, it's really user friendly, so here's pretty much what you can do with it. As you can see, it's got all the text. The reason why I chose this video tutorial was simply because it's so easy to use. It's been so popular on my color screen and it's been around for quite a while. So a lot of people aren't too sure what the best ways of using it are. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do it. So let's have a look at this awesome widget. So first let's have a look and see what makes this widget so great. If we start here, we can see you can easily add in time and date in a number of ways and fonts. It just looks really good. Not to mention that you can also have different ways of displaying your battery, displaying your temperature, and even just adding pretty much anything that you want on your phone system. It just looks really good. Now each one of these minimalistic text widgets were created in a matter of minutes. So they're really easy to do. And a lot of people just fear away from minimalistic text just because it might seem a bit tricky at first. So let us begin with today's minimalistic text tutorial. So once you've downloaded and installed minimalistic text, the first thing you want to do, because it's a widget, you can only get to it by your home screen. You want to hold down on your home screen or any other way of getting to your widgets and selecting widgets from here. Now from here, you can select any size of your minimalistic text. As you can see, there's quite a few to choose from. But for now, as you can see, it's got vertical and horizontal, which is quite convenient. So we're just going to go for a nice big 4x3 for now. Once you select the size, it'll bring you up into your preferences for this widget that you'll be creating. So starting off, we've got the name, which you can pretty much call the widget whatever you want. Just so if you're looking for it, it just gets quite convenient. But you can always do that if you want to save it later. In our background, I always like to deselect the background. Obviously, you can change it if you want. If you go into your background color and then change it, just so if you want to make some nice tiles with this widget, it looks really good. But we're just going to deselect it for now. And below that, it's got your shadow settings. Now, these shadow settings are for your fonts. So if you want to select show so shadow, show shadow, um, from here you can select the color. So we leave it black, obviously, for now, just because it's a shadow. And as well as you can change the how far away you want these or how large you want the shadow to be. So from here we'll go back. Next you want to go your widget direction. Now this is just explaining if you want one that is horizontal or vertical. So for now it's just left to right so it goes from there to there. But obviously if you've got a vertical one it's going to be top down or down to top. So it'll be just a lot easier to see if you want it to be vertical. Next we have our two horizontal and vertical blocks. Now what each of these mean is say if this was your entire widget the block your horizontal block is how does it go from left center or right and then your vertical block will go top middle and then below so if you want a so if you want all of your text from the widget to be right in the corner then you would say horizontal block right and then horiz and then vertical block you want it to be top and it'll allow you to get into the top top corner which gets really convenient sometimes and then finally, you have your horizontal text, which is pretty much your alignment. You want it to be center aligned, aligned to the left or to the right, which also gets really handy. Next, we come to our layouts, and our most important is our predefined layout. Now, if you're just a beginner, you can add just quick layouts, such as 12 hour, the date, the battery bar. So next, we come to the layout, and the most important part is our predefined layout. So if you're just a beginner, and you just want to select the time, the date, the battery bar, even the weather, you can add it from here and it just sets it up for you. You don't need to add in anything. But obviously you wanna be going into the custom one from here, which is where you'll be able to add in any layout you want and it's the highly recommended for ultimate customization. So that now allows you to enable this custom layout. So if we go into here, this is where all the magic happens. As you can see, they've already set up a predefined layout just to show you what it's gonna be looking like. So obviously if you don't want that, if you want to delete any one of these layouts or the, these blocks, you just have to hold down on it and then drag it into the bin like that. It should give you a little vibrate to know that you've been, you're putting it into the bin. So once you've deleted all of them, it'll now be a blank slate ready for adding in each one of these different layouts or these blocks that you wanna add. So let me just describe a little bit on the side here. We've got this plus, this little green bar, and this little red bar. This little plus button here means you wanna add an item that you'd like to place over here. The one below that, that means you wanna add a row. So if we select it, boom, there goes a row, just add it like that. And then the last one, that means remove a row. So 
tapping that will remove it. Remember anything that's on that row will get removed. So let's start off with adding something in the top row. So we'll just select the plus here. And this brings us to all the different options that we can choose here. So as you can see, this is just all just for battery. There's quite a few to choose from. So not only do you just have the battery one here, you have one for clock that displays all the different types of clocks you can add, the date, miscellaneous, system, and weather. So if you just wanted to add a simple clock, but you just want it to be a diff bit different than your usual digital clock, we'll have our 12 hour text here. If you want to add something, you just hold down, drag it into the bar there. As you can see, it'll show you what it'll look like now. And let's add something else. Say you can just add the general minutes. So you look for the one called minute two digits like this. So you're gonna hold down, drag it in like that. Now if you see a little arrow merge, let's just go into our miscellaneous here. And you wanna add in the static text item here. So as you can see, when you drag it, it shows you when you're gonna be placing it. So if you wanna go in between, just put it right there and it goes in between both of them. So as you can see, static text hasn't been defined now. And the reason why I'm going to be using static text is just to add in that little colon, well, that, well, the hour minute separator. So if we just had to add it in right, right there. And now from here, this brings up our, basically our item dialogue or item menu. And there's different things that you can change for each one of your items. So for starting off, you can just change your static text if you want it. And then below that, you got style. Now this is very important as you're going to have three styles to choose from for each one of your items added. So if you wanted to change your style for the static text selected, you got normal, accented, and then non-accented. So we want it to be accented, so we'll just select it like that, and that has now become accented. Now if you do the same for our text, and you make it that, both accented, like that, and then you go into minutes, two digits, and then make that non-accented. Once we've changed all of those, and we go back, let's just see if we go preview, just to see what it's gonna look like. As you can see, the accented ones, obviously a lot different than your normal text like there. So if we go back into custom layout and you're happy the way that it looks, let's just see if we can add in something else below it. Let's just say weather and I'm going to be choosing weather condition. So like as always you're just going to be dragging it onto that into that column like that. Now you can see I've chosen the center alignment so it's all underneath each other. If you chose the one that horizontal direction, if you chose, chose it to be left then it'll all be on this side. If it's right it'll be all on that side. So now we'll just go back as you can see, that's what our preview is going to look like. Now, allow overflow. That just means if you made the widget too small, allow overflow will just allow it to go out of those widget boundaries. It gets really handy sometimes if you've by mistake chosen the wrong widget size. So it is a really good thing to have. So I'm just going to bring the preview down. And as you can see, we, so now we come to our text style. And remember before we changed all of the different styles for the different types of items added. So this is where you can change each one of those three styles. So if we go into normal, we'll just select it like this. It'll bring up the font family. Now, as you can see, I have quite a few to choose from. So in order to change your fonts or well, to add them, we're just gonna go back, go into our global settings, and then scroll down to the fonts folder here. Now what you wanna do here is select it and then select the folder that you've saved all your fonts to. You might wanna watch the Android Theming 101 home screen tips and tricks to find out more about creating a good fonts folder. So once you've selected your fonts folder, we'll now go back and go back into where you want to change your font family. So let's just go for hero. You can also change the size if you want to make it bigger or smaller. You can change the case, you can make it bold. From case, you can make it normal, uppercase, lowercase, gets really cool. Your color, even adding blur, it just looks really cool. So from here, we'll just go back. You can change our accented now. Let's make it prime light. Doesn't really matter what you make it. Let's go back. And non-accented, let's go to Homer. Great. Now we want to go back now. Now we can always just double check what now we can always now we can always just double check what this is gonna look like. We can go preview, see that's gonna look like that. That's not too bad. Now we just want to add in some shadows. So we go back to the shadow. As you can see it's been added. Next we come to our widget content, which you can change obviously the language, the time zone, the zero mode for each one of these. So that's not too important. I don't really often change that. So next we come to tap behavior. Now this is quite important as you'll be defining what happens when you tap this widget on your home screen. So the first one, disable action on tap, that just means that once you've created this widget and you select it, nothing will happen. So if you just bump it by mistake, you won't open up this, this editor. So only select this once you're very happy with how the widget looks. 
Next, and this is probably the coolest ones, I don't know how many other widgets do this. I don't think, well, I know UCCW doesn't do this. So it's pretty, uh, quite a cool thing to have. It's called Speak on Tap, and that is correct. It'll now speak when you select this widget. Let's just see, we're gonna try it out. So we'll just select it for now. And obviously the next one is start another activity such as opening the clock, which is also quite handy as well. So that is quite a cool thing to have. Next is um, allow, next is update behavior. That's not too bad. You just, if you want to save some battery, I guess. And then we come to our global settings. Now there's not much to change here. You can pretty much just change your weather service. I always like to deselect this vibrate editor. Just so every time you're dragging and removing stuff from your widget layout, it doesn't have to keep vibrating which can cost some battery if you're gonna be using this a lot. So yeah, the rest in global settings is pretty much just the weather. So from here, we'll just go back. And now once you like it the way it looks, you really wanna to go to save, because once you save it here, you'll always have it no matter what, and you can always just go restore, and then restore a preference. Now when you save it, it's gonna be saved into, your, into a folder called minimalistic text preferences, which is really great if sometimes you see Take for example, holo cards seen on the My Color Screen channel. You can have, you can just paste those minimalistic text preferences into that and it'll just set up everything for you. So you can save it as what you want and then you just go OK. So once you've gone OK, you should have a widget looking similar to this. I know mine's got the date underneath, but my phone bombed out and I just had to add in this one. So remember we added in the, the tap to speech or tap to speak. Don't worry, it's got other languages that you might need to install as well, such as German, French, Italian, Spanish. So it is pretty cool if you don't, if your first language isn't English. So let's just try it out. 12.20, February 13. So that is pretty cool. And there we have our minimalistic text tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it, folks. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any other minimalistic text questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much, guys. This is Marco from My Color Screen, and don't stop customizing.